Okay, so uh, this video here, I thought I'd just throw something quick together on how to uh, clean a uh, Makuni uh, carburetor for a two-stroke third pike. It's a Makuni uh, VM36, 36 millimeter. Um, I got a Suzuki PE, uh, 79 PE250. You can see I yanked the carb out already. There's just a couple um, clamps there that hold it on to the intake boot and the air, air box boot. You take the uh, top of the carburetor off by unscrewing this part, just screws on and off. And then you lift it out and then you unhook your fuel line and then you unhook your uh, overflow right here. That goes on the bottom of your float bowl. And then you just kind of, I slide it back all the way in and then you can kind of pull it out this way. That's how it is on this bike anyway. So then what you do is, you know, the bike, the carburetor is like this. So you take the uh, four screws out that hold the float bowl in. Pretty self-explanatory, you get a Phillips head. Take those out, you split the carb apart. <clears throat> um, usually there's a lot of fuel sitting in the float bowl, so I just dumped it back in the tank, right? put it in there, then waste it. Um, and then what I like to do is take all the metal pieces I can off, and then use this stuff here. This Berryman Chem Dip stuff is awesome. Um, you just let it soak overnight or even a few hours, and uh, it'll eat up all the crap that's in the carb. And then uh, you spray it out with some carb cleaners, shoot, shoot stuff through there, all the passageways. And then I like to blow it out with compressed air too, just to make sure everything's clean. But for now, we just got to disassemble the rest of the carb. So I split it in half already. So then what you got to do here is uh, take a, it's a six millimeter socket. I've loosened some of these parts already. So you take that out. This is your main jet. For this carburetor, it's a 250. For this bike, I mean, it's got this little piece here that sits on there. Okay. Then um, you got to get your needle jet out, which is right there. That one, sometimes it's stuck in there. You can sometimes push it out with that. I had a part here. Let me get a smaller one here. Just kind of push it out. I don't want to be too rough with it. And then it kind of comes out like that. Needle nose here. You can see in there. It's kind of stuck. I'm going to pull it out with these needle nose. There it is. Put this back over. I'm trying to do this with two hand, one hand here. So. This is your needle jet. So this guy here, uh, they're also labeled. I don't know if you can see the number on it. Maybe not. Maybe my fat thumb's in the way, huh? There it is. This one is, it says P6. I don't know if you can see it. But they have different codes on there for how big the holes are, what the taper is and stuff. Um, so I just have all mine set up in stock, but... So that's your needle jet. Your needle goes up and down on that, controls the fuel flow for part throttle. And the, the needle goes up all the way full throttle, so then you're on the main jet, which is this guy here. Okay, and then you got your idle jet, which is, here's my finger, right there. So you got your idle jet. So you get my little screwdriver. Stick it down in there. Usually these aren't froze up. I don't tighten them too much because I don't want to have to deal with it being stuck. Uh, when I first got my other bike, my 77, the idle jet was froze up in there and someone had went ape with a screwdriver and screwed it all up. So I had to drive an easy out in there and luckily I got it out. I got a new idle jet for it and the carb was, was okay. So get that guy out. So this is your idle jet. It's got these little holes at the bottom there. And for the for this bike, this is a 40. Idle jet, pilot jet. Okay, and then you've got this float arm here. If you want to take your needle and seat out, which is below that, that's that little guy right there. So sometimes these are pressed in kind of hard. Sometimes they come out real easy. This one I got loose earlier. So I'll see if I can just pull it out. 
Yeah, I might just pull that, okay. So you pull out this little pin, make sure you don't lose that. It doesn't go flying in your garage. Take off that arm. Okay, and then you got your needle and seed are exposed there. Okay, so then we'll take, I believe it's a nine millimeter. <clears throat> yep, that's already loose, I got it loose already. So let's see if we can spin this out. Okay, get this little fella out of here. Now he's got a gasket. You can see it's right on here. See that little gasket? So usually I've had good luck reusing these a few times without any problems, but um, it's good to have a spare set around in case they're kind of chewed up. But these look pretty good still, so I'm gonna just probably reuse it. And then you lift this off here. And then there's another gasket on the other side of that. So I get that off. Put that with that so I don't lose it. Yeah, uh, and then I also already yanked off the uh, vent lines, which were plugged on on the side over here. Well, not like that, but like this. And then I yanked off the fuel line as well. I just put a little small in my fuel fuel filter. Maybe it's overkill, but <clears throat> so then the carburetor is pretty much ready to to dip in that carb cleaner. Um, I usually don't take out the, the idle speed screw because, I mean, it doesn't really matter if there's, I don't think that gets too dirty and I don't think there's, there's no fuel or air f really flowing through there. It just, it just affects like where the slide rests on, like how far up, you know. Uh, there is the idle mixture screw though here, or the air screw on a two stroke. This controls how much air comes in for your idle mix. So I'll take this guy out. Sometimes there's some crud gets in there. And there's a little spring in there too. So make sure you don't lose that. There he is. So I'll put that back on there. Okay. And so now it's pretty much ready to clean. Um, you know, this, this has a little rubber boot for the choke. I'll try to uh, keep it from being submerged in there. But I'm going to try and submerge the whole rest of the carburetor in there. So all these little passageways and stuff like that. See these little passages there and up in there, all over in here. I want all this to be submerged so it gets cleaned real good. Because I don't know what's in there, you know. If it could be some little specks of crap in there messing it up. And then I'll submerge the, I'll just put a little bit of carb cleaner maybe in the bottom of this here. But I don't think, I don't think I'm going to mess with that because I don't want to screw these floats up. So, so that's about it. Um, so then you soak it in this. Like I said, this is really good stuff. I recommend this as Berryman Chem Dip stuff. Um, I've had good luck with it in the past. Uh, it's good to have some spray stuff too. Um, I usually just let it soak overnight if I'm not in a rush. And then uh, in the morning I'll come out, clean it all off, blow it out with this stuff, and then I'll uh, get my compressor out. It's got a little small guy there and uh, blow it all out with compressed air and then reassemble it and uh, you just kind of go in reverse order. I don't know if you've never done this before it's kind of intimidating there's all these little parts and stuff you know but if you take it apart um, you know and you follow manual and you don't you put your parts in, in the order here where you can see stuff you know lose things usually you're all right but I would recommend if you're not doing this for the first time to get a manual um, you can pretty much find any kind of manual online, either for free online or you can, you know, find a, a paper one book on uh, eBay or something like that for a few bucks, maybe 10 or 15 bucks. It's good to have around. But, uh, yeah, the reason why I'm doing this, though, is because this bike, I took it out today. I noticed it was running a little goofy the other day, but um, I took it off today and it was running goofy. It would only run good with the choke on. And even then it was running a little funny. I turn the choke off, it would just kind of just kind of burble and die, you know. So that usually means something's goofed up with the carb. I've had that happen numerous times. So that bike kind of sat a lot this year, so it probably got some crap caked up in there somewhere. So I'll clean it out and hopefully it'll be good as new. Um, so anyway, that's about it. I'll see if I can do a video uh, reassembling this thing uh, maybe tomorrow once I let it sit clean and uh, go from there. 
But that's kind of it for Makuni carvers. There's not a lot to them. I know there's more complicated carburetors out there, but this one's not that complicated, I don't think. Um, so, anyway, that's it. Uh, hopefully that helps someone out there. Uh, talk to you later.